Hi, I'm Tanya Curry, and this is Tanya's Takeout from the Acumen Media Report. This week's Takeout involves the ANC NEC and also Nomvulo Mokinyani. In fact, the report is entitled Accuse Number One. These were President Ramaphosa's words about his own political party as he came out as president of the ANC, not president of the country. And with it, that beautiful Afrikaans expression came to mind. Die Popa gaan dance. <laughs> Excuse my pronunciation. This expression means that the dolls will stand up and dance. So something so big is coming that even inanimate objects will come to life and start boogieing on the dance floor. And that's what we're seeing. So the ANC NEC was, for me, a triumph. And when we look at the statistics that are included in the blog link, you'll see that Mr. Ramaphosa, President Ramaphosa, certainly has come out on top because of the ANC NEC. And, like we suspected, Mr. President was playing a game of chess. And it appears that he has left enough rope for all the Tutsis to hang themselves. Name after name after name has come out this week of people that either stepped down, were asked to, put, uh, to go on suspended uh, leave or special leave, and are under investigation. So this was really great news for our country and a swift step forward. Even Ubaba came out to say that the president should resign, him and Tony Ngeni, because we all know how very high the level of integrity is with Mr. Ngeni. This is the same guy who likes to drive around drunk and is convicted for fraud and corruption. Uh, Ubaba, though, will not be going to the state capture inquiry. He did make that clear this week. And that's because he's got too much to do. He's busy with those 900 what what charges, you know. And of course, accountability is voluntary when you are people like Jacob Zuma. But then we saw Nomvolo Mokanyani being set so beautifully onto that stage of the Zondo Commission where she was ripped to shreds. I have a personal, personal rage against this woman because of what she's done to our country over the period of time and the amount of money that, she's, that has been allegedly looted through Basasa. You'll remember that Angelo Greasy dropped super files on Nomvula Mokanyani and then this week we saw testimony from various parties at a birthday party that was thrown for Miss Mokanyani's 40th. Uh, and this is the point. A Greasy had referred to it as her 50th and to which she then said that she had never had a birthday party at a 50th birthday party at this particular venue. You see that the devil is in the detail. Anyway, she got up on the stand and she spun political rhetoric like we're all used to. Started off at 2003 and all, all of a sudden ended up in present day. Um, that's how she quickly got rid of time. But nobody was fooled within that commission. An advocate, Noche, is absolutely brilliant. He absolutely annihilated her. He got her to admit under oath that firstly she had a selective memory about the birthday party that apparently she had the birthday party was a complete surprise and hence she had nothing to do with it. When asked who paid for the party or who arranged the party she simply did not know. To which the advocate said well surely your husband would have known and you'd have spoken about it afterwards. It was, after all, a party that contained over 180 guests, so not something you'd forget, also a milestone birthday. For her, though, no. Apparently her husband, who drove her to the venue and actually made sure that she arrived at her surprise birthday, um, didn't know either. Uh, when asked, would she have thanked uh, somebody who had made such a special surprise party. I know I certainly would have if somebody arranged 180 people in a gala dinner and I was surprised. I would definitely would say, well, who did it? And wow, thank you from the bottom of my heart. But apparently if you're a Numvula, you just stand up and say thank you to everyone in the room and never ask another question. Also, if you're a Numvula, you get to walk in on your 50th birthday and get a 3.3 million rand lamb, um, Aston Martin. 
Uh, almost said Lamborghini. Aston Martin. Sorry. <laughs> 3.3 million Aston Martin. And somebody, because they're a friend, puts a deposit down of 2 million. When asked how she could possibly afford the Aston Martin, it came to light that 2 million of that was given to um, the dealership via a third person who was a friend of her husband's and in business with her husband who, and she admitted this under oath, had, were about to score a big deal from Eskimo. She actually said these words and she said it without any sort of remorse or uh, thought that it was strange. It, in fact, it just rolled off her tongue and um, she was actually quite proud that her husband was doing business with Eskom. Both the husband and the other third party have now are now deceased, but one of these parties is still alive. So when asked if the, that party is still owed $2 million from the deceased estate... Um, Nomvula Mokanyani said she doesn't remember. And that is Tanya's takeout. So, Dipopa, they're dancing. <laughs> I'm Tanya Curry, and this is my takeout of the Acumen Media Report.